If you are easily offended by bad language, this might not be the best vlog for you. Who the fuck are you? Yes! Ah! I want to continue the story of train spotting and the kind of vlogs I've been doing recently covering the movie. As most of you will be aware, T2 train spotting, the second train spotting, was released here in the cinemas in the UK over the last couple of days. Missed you, mate. I missed you too, Spud. It is a Scottish icon. The second version of Trainspotting is great. You get to see all of Edinburgh, my hometown, so there's quite a lot of pride in there. Even though the movie is about junkies. This is a continuation vlog of the kind of series I've been running. And today I want to talk about something quite interesting. Not necessarily specifically related to the second Trainspotting, but actually for both of the Trainspotting movies and throughout the series of books. Now there's quite a lot of bad language talked in the train spotting movies. I want to make this video today to explain the kind of culture behind it. Here in Scotland, when we speak, we speak with a local dialect. And here in Edinburgh, which is where the both movies are set, we have a very specific way of speaking. And we use a lot of slangs and a lot of swear words which actually don't have the same meaning that they might otherwise have. They are basically slangs worked into our everyday language. You know the word that I'm going to be talking about today because it features in the train spotting movies a lot, especially the first one. No cunt leaves here till we find out what cunt did it. There are many, many sources which will tell you it is the single most offensive swear word in the English language. I think there's been so many articles written about that and I'll link to a few of them below. It is always top of the list of most offensive words you can use in the English language, and for good reason. But here in Scotland, we use it so often in everyday language that it's kind of lost its meanings. So people here use it when they're talking about themselves. I'm not a type of cunt that goes looking for fucking bother like. When they're talking to friends, it comes up all the time. You can obviously say it in a really, really bad and rude way as well, in an aggressive way. The kind of cultural thing that I want to get across here is, in Scotland, we swear a lot when we talk, especially speaking in slangs. And that is why in train spotting there are so many swearing words because that is just how people here speak. Not everybody from Scotland will agree with that assessment, but it is true. Especially in the types of places where I was brought up here in a rough neighborhood in Edinburgh, it was commonplace that that's how we spoke. Among friends we spoke like that, to people we disliked, to people who we didn't know. That one word that is used in train spotting so many times by all the different characters is commonplace here in Scotland. It can be used in a highly offensive way, but here in Scotland we also use it in a kind of more, slightly more gentle terms. You could replace that word also to say, like, person. So, when people say that word in a non-violent way when they're talking with their friends, for example, it is a word that is used to replace the word person. Simple as that. That person. Scottish people swear a lot, it's a fact. And I think, to be honest, that's why train spotting is and was such a success because it was probably one of the first movies I'd say about Scotland that kind of had an accurate representation of how things really are. That is genuinely how Scottish people speak with those slangs, with those swear words. Not everybody, of course. In the Scotland I grew up, that is how people spoke. And it's not to say everybody approved because my parents certainly did not. And I was taught from a very young age to kind of reject it. But train spotting was very accurate, and I think people will find that with the second movie as well. You know, train spotting does kind of portray a side of Scotland not many people talk about, not many people are comfortable talking about. But through the writer's original series of books and then adapted into the movie, that kind of life does exist here in Scotland. So, there you go. I'm continuing this little mini series of train spotting related vlogs because, as I say, a very important movie and series of books about Scotland, Scottish culture, and I love Scotland and I just love talking about Scotland because I know that people from around the world love train spotting the movie. There's lots of little quirks in the movie that are very Scottish and not everybody from outside of Scotland totally understands, so I'd quite like to explain them in this little series. If you haven't seen it, go and check out the little review that I did of T2 train spotting, which is in the link down below. Go and see the second train spotting if you haven't seen it yet. Great movie. I'll catch you again tomorrow. Have a good night.